Well, good morning, folks. Hey, the old fisherman back with you. We on Lake Monticello. We on a treetop here, right there. I don't know if, you, if that fish farm is going or not. <clears throat> yep. Right there, you see a treetop with about five crappers right there on in it. We started with the jig down there. I put it down there before I turned on the cameras and uh, didn't get a bite. Oh, well, I got a bump. Right now, I got that same jig with a minnow tipped on it. Let's see if we can pull back up there and make one of these fish bite. There is crappies on that brush right there. There ain't many. It's about three or four, and I bet they're big ones. It's a treetop. It's all it is. It ain't really a brush. It's a existing treetop. Uh, this is like 22 degrees cold. And we could try to make a darn crappy bite that ain't biting. They're sitting there, like five or six of them sitting there. We're going to catch them suckers. Hopefully they'll bite this minnow. They ain't biting, they're sitting. And them crappers, probably a pound and a half or so. I caught one 2.20 right in here the other day. I'm real deep. Let me pull it up. Right there. Okay, one just come up at it. He's got it. We got him. He come up there and I pulled it up and he took it. See, that's what I'm talking about, folks, right there. Finding them, catching them in them treetops. You got to love that kind of fishing. Oh, he's a big one, too. Look at that. See that? That's what's in there. That's what's in there, folks. Pound and a half of us. 23 degrees catching a pound and a half crap it. But the good thing about it is it's sun shining. It's sun shining, the metal's still alive. <laughs> he took him on his hair jig. See that hair jig? That hair come from Logan, my dog. Hair jig. This is what I'm talking about, folks. Slab crappers. Deep water slab crappers. <clears throat> What I'm talking about. Fishing the tops of treetops. Mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time getting my line out because it's freezing. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, they would not hit it with just a jig. I tried that first. They'd run up to it and I'd take it. Well, that man I tipped on that jig, he'll take it. Oh, that one did, didn't he? It was, it was several of them in there. Let's drop it back down and see if we can get another one. We put it right on his head. Now the line's froze in my rod. And you can see right there you got a four or five crappers on the top of that tree. They're down there 30-something foot deep. That's why they don't show up big. But they are big. And you got to put it right on them. I dropped the first one, I dropped right by them. You can see my jig and minnow going down right there. Right on top of them. We got it on spot lock, so it should hold us here. All we should have to do is, if we can get it down right there amongst them fish, another one should take it. And that should put us pretty close. You don't want to fish under a crappie because the eye is the top of the head. But sometimes you can drop it below them and pull it up, and they'll take it. We ain't right on them, but we close. I don't know if one's going to come out there and get it in a knot. See them moving around? I tell you, you got to put it within a foot of him before you take it. He ain't going to come over there and get it. We got it within a couple foot of him, but it ain't right on him. They're there. I can see him moving. There comes one. There comes one. Coming to get it. He's on it. Oh, I missed him. Dad, blame it. I jerked too quick. That's the only thing that live scope would do for you to make you jerk too quick sometimes. 
drop back out. See if we can put it back on him. <clears throat> 30 foot deep. That time I watched the fish run up there to it and set the hook too quick. What I done instead of waiting. And my hands are cold. It's in the low twenties. <laughs> but sunshiny. <laughs> Very little wind. Right here. And that's the only reason I'm here. Any wind, I'd be at the house. Got to find a tree with some fish on it. Right there's another tree right there. There probably ain't no fish on it. I see him swimming around out there, looking at it. He ain't taking it though. Definitely looking at it. There he goes. There he goes. Got him. Got him. <laughs> My goodness, got him. Had to put it down and hold it on him to catch him, though. Let me tell you, that's a big fish, though. Big old crappy. Look at that. Look at the water crappy. Monster. That's what's down there, folks, in them trees. Two pounders. And you got to keep working them to get them to bite. That's what it is. Look at that. If that ain't a slab, folks, that fish right there is a monster. I mean, he's a monster. I don't know how much he weighs. I'm going to tell you in a minute. I got a scale. I bet he's two pounds. I got a scale in here somewhere if I can get to it, if it'll work in this cold weather. Right there. I don't know if the batteries is going to work or not. He weighs 215. You see it? Two pounds, 15 ounces. Darn near a three pound crappie. That's almost a three pound crappie, folks. That's what I'm talking about. A slab boost son. Look at that. Look how thick that crappie is. Now that's crappie. That's the kind you read about in Crappy Magazine. Oh my goodness. What a fish. Hey, I'll get back up and see if we get another one. Like plucking apples, I tell you. Well, I see one right up under me. We're going to have to put another metal on or this thing here's hurt. Let's put a fresh one on. Like picking apples, I tell you. Got to love picking apples. Crappy, uh, a Logan jig tip with a miller. What caught that fish? On six pound test, fluorocarbon leader, we got a panfish rod that I broke three inches off. A little bit stiffer than it was, but it works okay. I had a man put an eye back on it, broke it off with a darn net. Right down there is some more fish. There's about two or three of them laying around a treetop. It takes a while to catch them like this, but when you catch one, you got a prize. He didn't want to bite it. I can tell you that much. He did not want to bite it. Now, there's a limb down there, and there goes my jig, but I don't really see nothing down there. Now, I might have to move around and find another spot. We drifted off of where I caught that one. It wasn't with a couple fish in there. Uh, I'm not right. We're going to have to pull back up. Uh, we're not right. Let's see if we can find another treetop. Almost three pounds. That's a big crappy, folks. They're thick. 
They're real thick. Right there's a couple right up under my jig. Drop it on down in that tree. Drop it down in that tree. She wouldn't catch one of them. Right down in that tree. One's looking at it. He's looking at it, but he ain't taking it. There he is. We got him. We got him. We got him. We got him. He ain't a big one. That's a little crap. crappy. I think. I don't know. He may, he, he's coming up. He's bigger than I thought. Oh, he's small. But look at that. Got a nothing. Huh? Got a nothing. Plucking them out them trees. Look at that fat crap. Is what? The only thing with Logan's hair is it's so fine it wants to kind of get caught up on a G hook. It might be too soft, but it's working. Let's get another mother. Hey, we catch them slow, but show. Sure. I've seen that fish take it. Hey, this is working, y'all. Slow but show. <clears throat> right there, about two or three of them right out there by that treetop. <sighs> my doggone line's freezing in my eyelet. Is what it's doing. Get back on this tree. I see a big old fish down in that tree there. <clears throat> I don't see him now though. So we move over there to him. I see one in the front up there about five foot. I'm back down here. I need to be up there. Let's ease that thing on up. I see some more down in there too, though. Right up down about five foot, six, eight, ten foot up. You got to put it on him now. It ain't going to bite unless you put it on him. I see some right now. We're going to catch one of these if I get to them. They're in that tree. Right there. They're looking at it. Hmm. Turn back. I don't see my jig now. We got went in any contact with my jig. There he is. He hit it. Got him. Begging. Begging. I mean a big, big one. Big one. Big one. Oh my, big one. Oh my, I get excited with these big ones, folks. This is a big one. This is a big one. Look at that water crap. Oh my goodness, another monster. Another monster. Lord have mercy. Another like you read about in crappy magazine, son. Big crappy. Hey, they're killing it, little Logan G. <clears throat> Logan J. Look at that. Let's see what he weighs. Mm. Let's see if we can get it on here. That is big. 1.60. That's still over a pound and a half. But he's a nice one. Fun, ain't it? Lord have mercy, it's just fun. What? Once again, I got eight pound braid to a swivel, a number seven lead, 
and a 64th Logan G head. That's what we got. Right now. Soft hair, snails of hair, G head. G with a 64th head. Mario tied that and my buddy Jeff Pruitt gave me some. I just happen to have this Mario Logan jig on right now. And it's working. It's got a, a little bit of black in it. His hair has. And uh, black and, uh, oh, black and white. All right. Let's get back up here. Should we find or nothing? What y'all say? There's a couple, and ain't a lot of them, but they some in there mixed around the tops of these trees. We're going to dead blame try to catch us 20 of them. That's for sure. All right, there's another tree. Let's see here. Get back on it. Right there's a tree. You see right in there, there's about five or six crappies right there on, that on the bottom of that tree. Let's drop, they look like small ones though, and smaller fish. Let's drop down and see if we can catch one of the small ones. There it goes down, see it? It's hard to get, you got to keep moving your, well we got current today, something's pulling me around here. Current. I got to get down to the base of that tree to get them fish. They way down yonder, right where it forks off. And that right under the boat, too. Right there you see the tree. I don't have no idea where my jig is right now. I can't see it. Hopefully it's close. Probably going to end up getting in that darn tree and breaking my jig off. It's probably, there it is. It's up too high. Got to drop it down. See the fish right up under it? I'll drop it down about 10 foot. Put it right on them. You got to put it on his head now. Okay, that's getting close to it right there. Damn thing's freezing in my eye. It's a art to this, folks. You got to be able to control this boat, and you really need to be calm to do this. Hard to do this in the wind. Oh, that wind's getting up. I don't want to see that. That'll mess me up. No doubt. That'll mess me up. In a second. They still there, I just ain't getting them to bite now. Ain't taking it. I'm holding the spotlight right there. There's, there's several crappers in there. I think we need to put our long rod out too. I ain't seeing it now. I ain't seeing my jig. I see the fish. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Got him. Got him. Got him. He nailed it. Big one. Another big one. Oh my. Another big one. Oh my. Another big one. Huh? I'm talking whopper, buddy. I'm talking big one. Look at that. Look at that white fish. Look at that white fish. Oh my, 
Ma, 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 ma. Pound and a half. Ain't no two pounder, but he's a pound and a half. Look at that. Hey, the, the kind of crap is you read about where and crap is magazine a pound and a half. Huh? You gotta love this. This is better than anything you can possibly do. Now, we ain't snatching them in left and right, but what we catching is super dog slab crappies. I can't tell you that much. Boy, there's a pretty little minnow right there. What? That there's a good size right there. That net is gonna get me a fish. I guarantee you on that one. The only good thing about the wind, if if it's a if it's a steady wind, is that a darn we got ice in our line still. It's still below freezing. You can hold a spot lock right on them. This spot lock on this Trova will hold it right on them. My other one wasn't quite as efficient, but it was good, but it's not quite as efficient as this one because I added it to it. There he goes. Don't let him take it. Set the hook. <laughs> you got to love this. This is so much fun. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how big he is, but it's so much fun. Oh, Lord. That's a big one. Doggone camera cut off. I don't know what in the world happened to my camera. Look at that water cracker. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. A monster crappy. Oh my gosh. Look a here. Look a here. Folks, look a here what a crappy. Great gosh. I'm talking humongous what I'm talking. Humongous. <clears throat> Look at that. Son. That is a crappy like you read about in crappy magazine. What? Let's see how much that can weigh. I guarantee that in close to three pounds. Uh, no, but he's 2.20. Look at that. 2.20 super slab crappy. Look at the thickness of him. 2.20. That's a whopper. That, my friend, is a whopper. I mean, a whopper. Hey, day. Are we having fun or what? Might get one of them. Pulling right on them. There he goes. Got him. <laughs> Got him. Sniping crappies. Lord, have mercy. Another big one. Oh, my. Another big one. Another big one. Oh, Lord. A whopper. That's a whopper right there. Hey, day, that's a whopper. Look at yonder and what a crappy. Hey, day, sniping crappy. Come on around here. Come on around here, boy. Come on around here to daddy. Sniping crappy. Look at here, look at here. Oh, look at him. Hey, day, look at there, look at there, look at there. He nailed it. That's all I got to say. Oh, Logan G, huh? That crappy, that's two pounds. Look at that. Huh? I mean two pounds. Hey, day. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Sniping crappy. Then I'm moving up is what they're doing. Oh, that mercy throw it right on them. They're looking at it. They won't take it. They just quit biting.
I lost all my, there's a bike, there's a bike, there's a bike, we got him. He said I lost all my luck when I lost my Logan jig, but that, we got another nice one too. Big one, big one, big one. Oh my, big one on the long rod. I'm talking a whopper, buddy. I'm talking a monster. Three pounder almost. Hey, day what a crappy. What? That's the kind you read about in crappy magazine, folks. Got him with that little tiny hook on the roof of that mouth. What we doing? I'll leave them all. Look at the size of that crappy. That, my friend, is a super dog monster. Let's see what he weighs. He's close to three pounds. Got to be close to three pounds. Scales ain't working. There they come. Nope, 2.20, 2.2 and a quarter. I thought he was bigger than that. I thought he was three pounder. Oh, no. Freaking trolling motors, I mean, they kicked off. I ain't never in my life seen a beat. This spot lock is aggravating. 2.20. Almost two and a quarter. <clears throat> yeah. At least we caught a nut. Get back up here. I had it on spot lock on that spot. What happens? Kicks off. I lost my spot. Get some more up there. 2.20. And big old crappies. No doubt about that one. They don't want to bite. You got to hold it on them for a while before they'll take it. See, we spot some more of them. Right in there, son. Right in there. See them on that tree right there? Get up there a little closer. See if a spot lot and I get bait on. There's some crappies out there, right by that tree right there. Go right there. Right down there by that tree. You see it going down right there. I don't see the fish on that now though. We're gonna stop it right in the crevice. That tree may wanna come over there or come out and get it. There he goes. He bumped it, but didn't take it. There he goes again. Got him that time. We got him that time. We got him that time. Oh my, we got him that time. Big one. Another big one. Another big one. Another big one. Oh my, another big one. <clears throat> look at that, look at that, look at that. Another slab boost, buddy. I'm talking whopper fan. Look at that size of that fish. Hey, day what a crappy. Huh? Monster crappy. What? Oh my goodness. Monster crappy. Look at the size of that fish. Folks, they can't get no prettier than that. Look at that. Look at the size of that crappy. My gosh, let's see what it weighs. See what it weighs. Two point 
214, 215. 214. 214, folks. Over two pounds. Two and a quarter almost. Slab. I thought he was more than that. Get back on it. I'm fixing to put that metal right in his nose. See if he bites it. And looking at it. He's on it. We got him. He got him. Big. 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 Big and big and big. Another big one. Look at that. Look at that water cat. Hey, day. That's what you call plucking them, buddy. <laughs> That's what you call plucking another two and a quarter pound. What? That's what you call plucking them. Look at that. Slab booze crappy. What? Big one. Well, hello, folks. Hey, the old fisherman back with you. Today, we're going to do some frying crappy, uh, the old fisherman way, with skin on it. This is the way I do it when the crappy's got skin on it. I scale them and chunk them up. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. We got them drying in a pan with salt and pepper. And I'm going to eat the backbone too. I love that backbone piece. But uh, this is what they look like when you chunk them up in chunks. Got to love it. What we're going to do is we're going to take down and... Uh, <clears throat> We're going to fry them in a cast iron frying pan with about an inch of grease in it. And it's, uh, you can use vegetable grease uh, or whatever. Whatever you got works good. But uh, i get right back with you show you how I'm going to do it. All right, folks. Now here's the ingredients we're going to use. We got Crisco vegetable oil. We got cornstarch. We got Dixie Lily self-rising cornmeal, and we got shrimp tempura by Andy's. That's the ingredients we're going to use here, and salt and pepper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the self-rising cornmeal in this pan with some mix some tempura with it and a, a tablespoon of cornstarch, and that makes it fry up real pretty and crisp. Self-rising, not plain. I used to use plain all the time, but I started using self-rising cornmeal and adding a little corn stock starch to make it crispy. All right, we're going to pour some. Uh, what I hope is enough self-rising cornmeal and a little bit of Andes, but and mix it all up with some corn starch. I'm going to take about a half a tablespoon of cornstarch. Then I'm going to stir it around. Mix it all up. You can add salt and pepper in there also. I've already salt and peppered my fish though, but you don't need to do it twice. Stir it up, mix it up with blend it. Then we're going to take the fish and we're going to just batter them up with all that. Get them looking like that.
you can take and put it in a bag and shake it around and do it that way too. Several different ways to do it. This is the way I do it. I ain't got a bag. A brown bag works really good. But these chunks are going to be delicious, folks. I like cutting them in chunks. It seems like they fry up better. What I'm going to do is, I, when I fry fish, I normally take some over my sister's house. I surprise her. She loves hot fish. She lives right across the street. Alright. We're going to turn the uh, grease on to high. We let that, that um, I, what I do is I let it get almost to smoking. And I throw them in. Alright, folks. The grease is starting to smoke. We're going to take these doggone pieces and we're going to lay them in the Don't want to get too many in at a time. That should be enough right there. Looking good, eh? Look at that. Man, what you talking about? What I'll do is, is I'll kind of fluff them around in there. And then, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to put one more piece in there. Right in the middle. Got us a little pan to put them in. We'll, we'll take them out. They're looking good, I'll tell you that. I love chunks of thick, thick, two pound, pound and a half, two pound crabbers chunked up like this. Really good eating. One of my favorites. If you like thick pieces, boy, you can't beat this. What we do now is we turn them It's a lot easier if you're doing it in a big basket outside, but if you're going to do it for one person or two people, it's a lot easier inside. If you got a bunch of people eating, this is not the way to do it. But if you for two or three people, this is my preference. A lady up the street told me she this is the way she fried fish for years, and she used uh, self-rising cornmeal. Well, my mom always used plain cornmeal. But I tried the self-rising with a little cornstarch in it, and I loved it. And, of course, I'm adding a little. You don't have to. Just the corn, the self-rising cornmeal, yellow cornmeal, I'll do just fine with fish that's got skin on it. But I, I like the Andy's shrimp tempura batter mixed in and give it a little flavor. And you can see they're frying up really pretty. A lot of people want to know why you want to keep this piece right here. Well, I can tell you right now, there's a lot of meat on that. And that is really good eating. I hate to throw them away. So I keep those. I, I cut on each side the fin and pull the fin out. And that makes it without any fins. And uh, I like to do that before I cut the sides off. You got to watch it not get the grease too hot. I had it a little hot when we first put it in smoking, messing with cameras. You don't really want it smoking. You want to do it right before it starts to smoke. But I got to turn down some now. Probably too much. 
But, uh, hey, that's some good eating. I take a little ketchup, and I like sweet, um, sweet pickles with it. Of course, uh, you know, a lot of times by myself, I just eat fish. Most people want corn, uh, uh, french fries and hush puppies and slaw. But I'm I'm on the go so much that I prepare all that. I just leave to just eat the fish with sweet pickles and ketchup. The way I eat most of my fish, unless I got company, then I'll have French fries and all that. I eat fish about three times a week, but I'll do it different ways. I'll do some fillets without uh, skin on them, and I like to uh, slice them in a little bit of mustard, not real thick, and do them that way. But this is my favorite way with the cornmeal with the skin on them. They'd be all right without the skin, but I like that skin on them. This brings me back to when I was a kid. That's the way my mama done it. see how pretty that is the thicker they are the little bit longer you got to cook them but they just about ready by cutting them in chunks they get ready pretty fast now I think it's always best to fry them in a cast iron frying pan also you don't have to that's what I do. You'll see right there how pretty that is. That's going to be some good eating right there. Man, and my dog Logan loves them things. I'll take the skin off of him and just give him the white meat on the inside and thick pieces. And he truly, truly loves them. Yeah, we got them done. So now, we're going to put us a, uh, the backbone piece in there. I'm going to fry one of them. I'll fry both of them, and then we'll fry the other nuggets. Tell you, they're so big to fill up the pan. Backbone. Quiet in here by yourself. People who don't live by themselves don't know how tough that is. Thank God for my dog Logan. When you used to living with somebody and something happened to your mate, not pleasant. Golden brown. That's what it is. Look at that, folks. Let's try a piece. What y'all say? I'll be cool enough. Yeah. Mmm. 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 That's so good. Mmm. Right there's what I'm talking about. You're talking about a nice eating, some good eating pickles, ketchup, and fish. That's how we're going to do it tonight, folks. Take the last couple pieces out, and we're done. What I'm talking about right there, folks. We're going to set this right over here where I'm going to eat. All right, folks. This is it. Look at here. You got to love it. We're going to eat fish tonight. The old fisherman way. And you'll see the pickles. We're using the bread and butter pickles. And Heinz ketchup, bread and butter pickles, and Heinz ketchup. You see them? That's our meal for the night. Thanks for watching the Old Fisherman video, and thank God for all my fans out there. I appreciate each and every one of you.